Hi, my name is Andy Davis and I've been a professional photographer for around about the past 30 years and more recently specialising in videography. I became involved with the Unleved Heritage team a few years ago and have conducted two projects with them so far. Today I'd like to present the experiences and outcomes from these two workshops that I ran. Photography is actually made up of two Greek words, photo and graphy. Photo means light and graphy means to draw or to write. So in effect we are actually light drawing when we're taking pictures. As a consequence of this we actually read the world rather than see it. Our brains make up a picture from what light we gather with our eyes. Thankfully this is a skill that we're born with. We all have the innate ability to create compositions with our cameras. Photography is subjective. There is no mark, grade, right or wrong associated with an image. So this is a comfortable place for young people to be as they're not feeling that they are being judged. The first project I became involved with was in Llanelli with young people who came to Unloved Heritage through the Youth Support Service. They were young people who were receiving some extra support from youth services for a whole variety of reasons, behavioural, academic, health or social. The group were all given the option to choose to attend the programme or not, but had to commit to attend it consistently and to participate fully in project activities. These were mostly held during school time, so the pupils were out of normal lessons to attend them. However, even those which were held outside the school time and were therefore voluntary were well attended. Sarah Rees, the unloved heritage project officer for Athletley, had identified a number of buildings in the town centre that would be interesting for the youngsters to go around and photograph as part of their unloved heritage. We had a number of digital SLR cameras that were shared amongst the participants and I started off by giving a basic description of how the camera worked and how we could adjust the settings to get the right exposure and then looked at how to set focus and change what we call point of view or the angle at which the camera is and the level it's taken at. Nearly all the participants had mobile phones with them which obviously have cameras so they were able to use those as well to capture images. The participants were encouraged to look for shapes and not just take the obvious picture and it was very interesting to see what they came up with. It is more often than not the most creative images are the ones that aren't the obvious picture and even in the case of what might appear to be a mistake at first becomes a really atmospheric image. There is an instantaneous response in our brains when we view an image that is a chemical one that results in an emotion being felt. Our brain then tries to decipher the patterns and shapes and colours in the image to work out if there may be a story as well. But sometimes this can be ambiguous and often makes the image more intriguing. Shop Awerin was tragically destined to be demolished but the decay in the sign and the vegetation growing out of the walls and the boarded up front really lent to a lot of atmosphere and the youngsters were able to pick out details of this decay to make really interesting images. This empowered them to look at the world in front of them in a new light and to appreciate the heritage in their hometown. The faded murals on the wall at this location were probably my favourite as they lent themselves to all different kinds of photography, particularly when people walk past, bringing back memories of Cartier Bresson's idea of the decisive moment. The last location we visited was the old Buckley's Brewery and again the participants were encouraged to look at the patterns and decay in the building to create imagery. We then did two sessions in Ammonford Library using two laptops to edit the images. These were collected from all the participants and the first thing I did with the youngsters was to show them how to edit a picture in a conventional way by just changing contrast, colours a little bit in terms of white balance and sharpening, things like that. And then we started to explore the use of filters to create these powerful images in front of you. There was some initial apprehension about using the computer at the first, but once I'd shown them how simple the filters were to use, some of the participants really got into this and would play around with their images quite quietly and in an involved way. Once they realised that what was coming up in front of them on the screen was really good. There were a number of different outputs that resulted from the work produced during the workshops. 
and one of these was to print the images for an exhibition in Tlenetli. The mayor was invited to open the exhibition and also the judge which he thought was the best photo. Some of the images were printed as postcards and used as a means to collect feedback at exhibitions and events, asking the question, what does culture and heritage mean to you? The second project I worked on was with a group of young people in Pembroke Dock who were all on a program with Pembrokeshire Youth Service to encourage them into either work or training. The workshop was based in the Pembroke Dock Heritage Centre which has over 200 years of maritime military and social history which proved to be ideal in terms of subject matter for the participants to capture. I began the workshop by explaining how the digital camera works by experimenting with subjects just as simple as this cup of coffee and doing portraits of people. I have a background as a university lecturer and really the skill that's required in this situation is to be able to closely observe the participants to see how they're taking in the information that I'm trying to get over and making sure that they stay in their comfort zone. It was a nice day so we went outside and uh, Polly had brought along some props that we could use for dressing up people and using the cameras we explored different techniques and learning from the mistakes and then improving on the image as we went along. In these pictures we explored the different ways of orientating the camera from landscape to portrait and then refining how the person would be cropped in the image and which way they'd be looking. We came inside and this presented new challenges because now we were using close focus and more macro techniques so things like shutter speed and focus were critical to get right. But as we went through the subjects, I handheld the participants to be able to recognise what their mistakes were and how to fix them, such as in this case changing the point of view to come down really low. In some cases the view was too wide and then later on in Photoshop we were able to crop into the image to make a powerful picture. Again, same example here where the field of view is too wide and then just by cropping in becomes an interesting composition. The models were really interesting and gave two of the participants who were interested in this kind of subject matter a lot of elements to look at. In this case we're looking at shallow depth of field where that depth of field should be placed and this was probably my favourite exhibit in the museum which was a Sutherland engine which had fantastic patterns and shapes. This will give you an idea of just how easy it is to manipulate the pictures in Photoshop. So we drag the image in and the square there is a crop tool so by narrowing the, the crop we can then recompose the image to make a much more powerful picture. Again here we've got the crop tool and just by dragging the corners downwards and then the, the bottom upwards we can make a nice pleasing composition. This is a picture that was taken in raw format in the camera and it's been dragged into Photoshop into a program called Adobe Camera Raw where we can adjust things like the white balance to change the colours in the image and I'm just tweaked the contrast a little bit and improving the clarity and the vibrance just to make the colours pop a little bit more. Then the image is saved and can be manipulated in Photoshop afterwards. It was great to have feedback from one of the members of the group who wrote quite a lot on social media about his experiences and I'll give you time to read through what he's said here. One of the key points I think is that he felt that he was comfortable in his environment and that he was able to learn and it certainly reflected in his work or the output that he came out with. The team really couldn't have asked for more positive feedback from this particular participant as he also found the unloved heritage aspect of the course has been really interesting as well. In this comment here he says, our history is outstanding and since starting this project I've recently opened my eyes into my local community and its history. I have acquired new skills which are transferable into everyday life and have started to notice more things just by taking a different approach to viewing things around me. So this really sums up what my teaching in photography is all about. There were a number of excellent outputs from these workshops and other work that Polly has been doing with the groups. One of these is an arts award which is accredited by Trinity College in London. 
another set of colourful postcards and also posting on social media both by the Unloved Heritage team and also by the participants themselves. But perhaps the most important output of all this work is that it can be life-changing for the participants. Some of the people that attended the workshop in Pembroke Dock suffered from anxiety and a reluctance even to be able to go outside and engage with normal life. And for one of the participants, this has changed his life completely. This will give you an idea of how easy it is to manipulate the images in Photoshop. So I've loaded the picture of the Sutherland flying boat engine and then gone to filter and then started to adjust some settings that will then graphically affect the image. So you can see the image here changing, getting quite noisy or grainy and I can adjust the various aspects of that effect. So I've refreshed the image and now I'm going to do some distortion of the image just by grabbing this circle and then pulling the image around. And now you can see how we're starting to play with all of the lines and structure in the image. I've gone to another colour effect. So you can see how readily the image can be changed to create a very powerful graphical effect. We ran the workshop over two days, giving plenty of time for the participants to edit the pictures in Photoshop to create these really interesting postcards. One participant was obviously not going to be comfortable using the digital SLR, but I realised that in fact that she took pictures every day, so I asked her whether she was a photographer or not, and her reply was no. But then I said, well, show me your phone. How many pictures do you have on your phone? And then she realised that in fact she did make images every day and she was quite comfortable then in participating in the workshop but using her mobile phone. And this made me realise that every participant has already had some experience in photography and also video and that they all carry around a device that would allow them to participate in a way in which they feel comfortable. In fact, they are learning skills that will benefit them in their everyday lives and they soon realise that this is a benefit to them. Some of the participants in the Unloved Heritage Programme may be there because they have low self-esteem or may be labelled as a non-achiever in school but the fact that they are comfortable in using their mobile phones on a day-to-day -day basis means that they can easily take pictures with some guidance and then when they come to the computer they can create these wonderful images which are then transformed into postcards or exhibitions and this really boosts their feeling of self-esteem and benefits them in other aspects of their lives. One of the participants on the Pembroke project was also doing his arts award and as part of this he had to demonstrate participation in arts activities and he chose to submit his portfolio online through the arts award magazine, The Voice. He also wrote on the arts award page and I was incredibly impressed with his writing about how the digital SLR worked, which was quite uh, extraordinary, and also how he managed to edit pictures in Photoshop. Mobile phones today are largely sold on their ability to take fantastic pictures and video. The quality of the still images that they can produce and the resolution and colours in their videos are quite extraordinary and can be used for quite high-end work. They offer great opportunities in the future for the Unloved Heritage Project as every young person has one and are familiar with using them. This will give you an idea of just how easy it is to use the photography capabilities on the phone. So here I've just focused in quite close on subject and then taken a picture and you can see the photo size is 13 megapixels which is very high quality. You can also put the camera into manual mode giving you the same functionality as a digital SLR. You can change the exposure by just dragging this icon which will make the image go brighter or darker and adjust the white balance to make the image either warmer or cooler adding yellow or blue in exactly the same way you can do on a digital SLR. So this is a fantastic stepping stone if the participant becomes interested in photography and wants to take it further.
Another exciting opportunity is to take the camera and video into the sky. Youngsters are extremely adept at controlling drones as they are so used to playing computer games that involve complex controls and working in a 3D space. I've been extremely impressed with the participants and the outputs they have produced. Just a thought for you here, this image of coloured spots painted in emulsion on canvas by Damien Hurst sold for £509,000. But I think the creativity shown by the participants in the Unloved Heritage Project is far better and is of far greater value as it can be life-changing for them. Well, this is the end of my presentation, but it is definitely not the end of Unloved Heritage and the benefits that it can provide. In fact, I think it's just the beginning.